Hi, everybody, and welcome to Dr. Archer's Lectures. For the last couple of weeks, we have been looking at supply and demand. We learned that the law of demand tells us as the price goes up, quantity demanded goes down. That's the buyer's point of view. We learned that the law of supply tells us that as price goes up, quantity supplied also goes up. That's the seller's point of view. This week, we're going to look a little further into why some of those buying decisions take place and also a little more specifically on how much quantity responds to a change in price. And so today, what we're talking about is utility theory. Utility, in terms of economics, is the amount of satisfaction derived from consuming a good or service. And so total utility has to do with how much satisfaction you would derive from uh, consuming a series of that good or service. Think of it as pizza. The first piece of pizza tastes really good, and maybe you would get seven units of pleasure from that piece. And then the second piece, maybe it's, it's still really good, but you don't want it quite as much, so maybe you get five units. Seven for the first plus five for the second gives you a total utility after two pieces of pizza of 12 units of satisfaction. By the way, those units of satisfaction are called utiles. Don't get too wrapped up into exactly what a utile is. It's a relative term. It's kind of an arbitrary measure. It's just a way of stating how much satisfaction was achieved from consuming that good or service. And it gives us a way to mathematically compare consuming one good to consuming another good. So total utility is the total amount of satisfaction, the total number of utiles from the sum of all items consumed, one piece of pizza plus two pieces of pizza. Marginal utility, on the other hand, deals with the change in total utility. And it's probably a good time to talk about that word marginal. Anytime you see that word marginal in economics, it has to do with change. In this case, we're looking at the change in total utility for consuming one additional marginal unit. So change in total utility divided by change in quantity. This tells us the last pizza, pizza, piece of pizza that we consumed, how much utility did we get from that one more. It turns out that the more pleasure we get from a product, the more we're willing to pay for it. Now that makes sense, doesn't it? If I really love pizza, I might pay a lot for it. On the other hand, if I just barely like pizza and I'm only eating this because it's fast and easy, I'm not going to be willing to pay very much. That's easy to see. The other piece of it is that the more pizza I have, the less inclined I am to eat another piece and therefore the less willing I am to pay more for that next piece. But we'll talk more about that as we go along. That has to do with the law of diminishing marginal utility. Marginal utility, here's the specific uh, formula that I was just talking about. Change in total utility divided by change in quantity. Marginal utility declines as more of a good is consu consumed over time. Think about that pizza again. First piece tastes fantastic. We'd give that a nine. Second piece, still pretty darn good, but maybe not a full nine. So maybe we go with seven units of utility for the second piece. Third piece, I'm getting full. I really don't want it nearly as much as I wanted the first two, so we'll give this a three. Fourth piece of pizza, I don't want a fourth piece of pizza. I'm going to get zero marginal utility out of that fourth piece. There's really no reason for me to eat a fourth piece. I don't want it. 
if I was pressed and I I was forced to consider to consume a fifth piece of pizza not only would that not add to my total utility or pleasure from eating pizza it might detract five pieces of pizza I might get sick I might throw up that is not a good thing that diminishes my total marginal utility for the whole experience for the whole series so in fact you can have negative satisfaction here's what marginal diminishing marginal utility looks like on the graph first of all we see that total utility increases for a very long time with the first uh, we're eating popcorn here with the first box of popcorn 20 utiles of satisfaction notice that this graph just goes straight over to the two and then straight up it's not a smooth curve that's because you won't get any additional utility until you consume that second box but with that second box boom we jump up to 35 35 total utilities total utiles for two boxes of popcorn now we go over to the three at three we bump up to 44 see how these stairs are getting shorter as we go along the interval between these numbers is getting smaller as we go along that marginal utility is decreasing three boxes of popcorn is a lot of popcorn and so a fourth box well if you insist but I really don't want it a fifth box uh, after the fifth box and the sixth box after that I'm just I'm just sick I don't want any more popcorn and not only do I not want it it's making me ill I'm into negative total utility meanwhile on this side this is our marginal utility this tells us how much utility for each additional box so when we go from zero to one this is excellent we get 20 utiles for zero to one but when we go from one to two we get a little bit less 15 utiles still want the popcorn still loving the popcorn but the utility the satisfaction the pleasure from that second box of popcorn a little less than it was for the first then we go to the third box ooh we're down to nine additional utiles fourth box we're down to five additional utiles fifth box yields just one additional unit of satisfaction if we go to the sixth box we drop into negative territory it's actually a negative 10 honestly I don't want any more popcorn when marginal utility is greater than zero you can see that that would increase your total utility because total utility we're just adding together the utility gained from each item consumed in the series and so as long as this marginal utility the utility from consuming one more is greater than zero it's going to add to our total utility but when marginal utility is less than zero it actually reduces our total utility and you see it right here when marginal utility equals zero total utility is at its very highest think about it this way when marginal utility is greater than zero you would increase total utility by increasing your consumption when marginal utility is less than zero you can increase total utility by decreasing your consumption but when marginal utility equals zero there's no way to increase your total utility you can't you can't increase your consumption you can't decrease your consumption neither of those will increase your total utility how does that relate to price well as we talked about at the beginning of this lecture the more satisfaction you get from consuming a good or service the more willing you are to pay for it 
So the more marginal utility a product delivers, the more we're willing to pay. But that's a moving target, isn't it? Because we just saw in the previous couple of slides that marginal utility is diminishing. The first piece of pizza, you can probably get a great price for that. Second piece, not so much. Third piece, you better be making me a deal. Fourth piece, yeah, I don't want it even if you're giving them away. As marginal utility diminishes, we're only going to buy additional units if the price decreases. And does that ring a bell? Does that make sense? The law of demand says that the quantity, uh, quantity demanded in a given time increases as its price falls. So marginal utility says, I don't really want this so much. But you decrease the price, and that causes quantity demanded to go up. And we say, well, you're making me such a good deal. I'll have another. And that's exactly how this works. And that's why the demand curve is downward sloping. It's because of that diminishing marginal utility. If you want people to buy more of the same good or service, you have to keep reducing the price because the more they have, the less inclined they are to buy more. What about when you're choosing between two or more products? What if I could have cookies or milk? In that case, you would revert to a look at marginal utility per dollar. Marginal utility divided by price. Marginal utility divided by price. It just tells us how many utiles I'm getting for the dollar. And of course, for all of us, our goal, our overriding goal, is to maximize our satisfaction for the amount of scarce resources that we have, for the amount of money that we have. And so when we put it in terms of the marginal utility per dollar, we can see if I spend one more dollar, where am I going to get the most satisfaction? And when you look at two items, let's say that X is the cookies and Y is the milk, we're looking for that place where marginal utility over price for cookies is equal to marginal utility over price for milk. And as it shows in our textbook, this may not be the same quantity. It might be three cookies and two milks. It might be one cookie and two milks. They can be different quantities, but you're looking for that spot where the marginal utility over price for one item is equal to the marginal utility of overprice for the other competing item. And that concludes our lecture. Thanks for being with us today. I look forward to seeing your responses in the uh, discussion forum and seeing your homework. Let me know if you have questions, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Dr. Archer's Lectures.